Hey guys, Matt from Mr. Matt's Arcade here. Today I'm going to show you the brand new game board that I got in. Um, this is one of the newest ones on the market. It's the Alpha 3D Max. This one has 10,000 games. Yeah, you heard that right. 10,000. It's a little crazy if you ask me. But the nice thing with all these boards is you can um, hide games from the games list. So you can narrow it down if you want to. Um, however, this one, uh, one of the nice things is the way everything is very well organized. So even though there's a lot of games on here, it's still super easy to find everything you want. Um, at the top here, we have 3D. That's a category of your 3D games. And it has over 300 3D games. The systems on this game board are uh, PSP. Nintendo 64, Dreamcast, MAME, your arcade games, Naomi, The Thomas Wave, Sega Genesis, Super Nintendo, PC Engine, Original Nintendo, and I'm probably missing a couple, but I'll go over that in more detail. Anyway, so we have 300 3D games. And then we have 9,702 2D games. This one has a couple of nice things um, compared to some of the other systems. A really nice setup is it has one button um, to favorite, so you can mark games of favorite while you're on the games list. And that's such a convenient um, feature. And most of the other game boards, you have to go into the settings menu, and then you have to scroll through all the games to get to the one that you want to favorite. This one, if you play a game and you really like it, and you want to mark it as a favorite, because it has a separate favorites list, um, makes it just so much easier. So all we got to do, if we wanted to add this one to favorites, press the C button, puts a little star next to it, and then if we go up here, bam, there's our favorites menu. And it's probably the easiest um, way to mark favorites in any game board that we've ever used. So at the top, you have these categories here, and then I'll show you the search as well. So you have your 3D games, your 2D games, your favorite games, your recently played games, and then you have your search. And this one has a very excellent... Um, search function as well. You can search, you can break it down by category. So we have versus games, shooting games, puzzle, action, sport, racing, four player, and a trackball category. And that is another awesome thing. This game board is trackball compatible. There's only a couple on the market that are. And the other one is the DX that I use a lot. And that one, I had to go through and play all the different games and add games to get trackball compatible ones and then you still have no way of knowing when you're looking at the games list which ones are trackball compatible. You had to refer to the printed list that I made or you just had to remember or turn it on and try them and that's just a pain in the butt. This one has a separate category for trackball which is awesome. And then it also breaks it down by uh, emulator or game system. So we have Dreamcast, Nintendo 64, MAME, which is your arcade, PSP, PlayStation 1, Super Nintendo, regular Nintendo, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, Mega Drive or uh, Sega Genesis, FBA, which is Final Burn Alpha, that's more of your arcade games, and PC Engine. And then this game board also has um, Atari games on it. It just doesn't have a separate category for those right now. Um, so let's go ahead and just go through the games list a little bit. I'm not going to go through all of them. Um, so here's some of the 3D games. Some nice Tekken ones. These are PSP. 
Soul Calibur, Mortal Kombat Unchange, Unchained. Some Dragon Ball games. Dungeons and Dragons. FIVA Soccer, Final Fantasy VII Crisis Core, Initial D, Hitman Reborn, Mega Man, several Mega Man games, Metal, Metal Slug XX, some Need for Speed games, Twisted Metal Head On, Wipeout, Capcom versus SNK. I'm just pointing out some of the popular games and some of the ones that I like. Um, Capcom versus SNK 2. Then we got some Dead or Alive, uh, Guilty Gear, Marvel versus Capcom 2. Power Stone, Street Fighter Zero Three, Virtual Tennis, WWF Royal Rumble, Naomi version, Dolphin Blue, a couple more Guilty Gears. Guilty Gear, Thomas Way version, King of Fighters, Metal Slug 6, Rumblefish, Crazy Taxi 2, love that game, Sonic Adventure 2, 007 Tomorrow Never Dies, Batman Forever, Battle Arena Toshin Den, Bloody Roar 2, Bomberman Fantasy, another Capcom, Castlevania, Symphony of the Night, Cool Borders 2, love that game too, Final Fantasy Origins, Gran Turismo, Guilty Gear, Mortal Kombat 3, Mortal Kombat 4, Mortal Kombat Trilogy, NBA Hang, Hang Time, NBA Showtime, and just a whole bunch of great games. Um, and that's just the 3D list. Lots of great ones on here. Could go through the whole thing, but it would take me quite a long time. Oh, here's some of the Nintendo 64 games. Diddy Kong Racing. Mario Kart. Gotta love that one. So there's lots and lots of great 3D games on here. And then let's take a look at the 2D list. So you got your King of Fighters. And after the first couple of pages here, you got Metal Slugs, Street Fighters, Street Fighters. And then after the first couple pages, it is in alphabetical order for the most part, which is such a big, uh, great feature. Um, one of the things that always has bothered me and my other customers, clients, um, about the DX is that it's in a seemingly random order. I never understood the order they put them in and... It's one of the biggest downfalls with that board. Um, and this one corrects it. Things are in alphabetical order and separated by system. There's one thing that I don't like a little bit is that when you're looking at the games on the games list, it doesn't tell you what system it is. These ones right here are arcade. I know that. However, it doesn't say arcade. It would be nice if... They had another symbol right here instead of the shooting symbol that said it was arcade. 
or if they had um, an abbreviation after it saying arcade. And I'm going to work on this game board and see if I can correct the couple of little issues that I found with it. And that's one of them. I'm hoping that I can figure out a way to change the naming to add um, a suffix with what system it is or possibly change the little icons to mark which system it is. But the nice thing is, with the search function, if you want to make sure that you're checking out arcade games, you go up to the MAME or the Final Burn Alpha one and enter it. And now here we go. We know these are all arcade games. Same thing if we wanted to check out the Dreamcast games. You go over to Dreamcast and enter that. And now we know we're going through all the Dreamcast games. So at least you do have a way to find out um, which system it is on the game selection screen. Um, so the way this one, this game board works, as start will bring up your search, left and right goes page by page, up and down goes game by game, so left or right, page by page, up or down, game by game, and just like all the other ones, you can hold it to scroll quicker, and it scrolls pretty fast through the systems, which is nice. Um, when you find a game you want to play, you press the A button. If you find a game that you want to favorite, you press the C button. So let's load up uh, Metal Slug. If you found a game you wanted to play, press the A button, and it'll load it up. The loading time on starting some of these games is a little bit long. But once the game starts up, it works great. And this is an arcade game. And all the games that I've played seem to play pretty well. And this one does have support save state and load state for some of the systems, and it does have the pause menu. Um, you press the pause button or player to coin button, and it brings up this menu. And you can do save state or load state. If you do save state, exit out, come back in later and do load state, it'll pick up where you left off. To get back to the main menu, go up to quit, hit the A button and that'll kick us back to the menu. And this system doesn't have nearly as many of the um, repeated games or the uh, different modded games like you see in a lot of the game boards. It does have a few as you can see through here but it's not nearly as many as some of the other game boards do, which is nice. It still has plenty for you to choose from, but it's not you're not overwhelmed with a million different versions of the same game.
And as you can see, I'm really bad at this game, although I did win that round. Um, but you can see everything runs really nicely. And the button mapping that they have set up um, for a lot of these games is pretty good. Like this one right here, we got punches on the top row, kicks on the bottom row, so that's nice. And some of the other systems, the button map, uh, some of the other game boards, the button mapping isn't the best. So let's take a look at some of the Dreamcast games. Let's go to Dead or Alive 2. And there's a lot of new systems on here compared to the Pandora's Box DX. I truly believe that this game board is worth upgrading to. And I plan on including it now um, with my new builds, or at least as an option, optional upgrade or something, because I really think it's worth it. Every year or so, they come... <laughs> All these companies come out with new game boards most of the time. It's the same hardware, and it's just repackaged with a few extra games or something like that. Um, the hardware on this game board is a Rockchip uh, 3288, I believe, processor, and it has one gigabyte of RAM. And it truly has one gigabyte of RAM. Some of the other game boards will say they have two gig, but they actually mean two gigabit, which is only 256 megabytes RAM. This one I've checked. It really does have a full gigabyte of RAM. And everything, the processor, the RAM, the whole thing, all seems to run quite well for all the games I've tested. As you guys can see, fighting games are not my strong point. But for a Dreamcast game, this runs excellent. I'm very impressed. We'll load up another Dreamcast game and then we'll run over to some of the other systems. Oh, let's go down to Crazy Taxi. Let's make that crazy money. And the other nice thing about this system is it's not as locked down as some of the other game boards. So I do have access to the RetroArch uh, config files, which are your emulator config files. So I can tweak stuff if I want to. I have access to adding new game remaps. So if we find some games aren't mapped properly, I have a way to change it and fix it. And there's just a lot of other things that are easier for me to get into and adjust and fix with this game board. Um, some of the game boards, like the Pandora's Box DX and some of the other systems, uh, the companies really lock everything down and encrypt it and make it very difficult. Uh, the nice, one, nice thing is this one isn't nearly as difficult to get into. So as I do more testing and as you guys test it out and try it out for me, if you find out there's an issue, a game that doesn't work, buttons are mapped wrong, something like that, I have more control to be able to fix it and give you an update. It's party time! Let's have some fun! Alright, let's go make some crazy money! Go ahead and pick a card and slap! Alright, take down the game! Don't ease up! Let's make that crazy money. Hey, 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 it's 
Time to make some crazy money. Are you ready? Here we go. So this game seemed to run really well. I did notice a few audio glitches. Uh, the soundtrack glitched out a little bit and got a little staticky. Um, so that's something I'm going to look into when I have a little time, see if I can tweak a few things to get that a little better. But the actual gameplay, everything seems to run at proper speed. And yeah, everything seems pretty good. Alright, let's switch over to another system. Let's check out N64. Right, let's see, what do we got? I never really played N64 that much. I'm not sure what it's really good games, but uh, let's do Diddy Kong Racing. And if you see there, it says game remap file loaded. So the company actually spent some time to make sure that the controls actually work and they adjusted and added remap files, which is pretty neat to see because a lot of times these companies just throw games on there. They don't test them out or anything like that. They just go for game count with zero testing and zero effort put in. But this company actually put a lot of work into this game board and is really trying to put out a nice product. So as you guys can see, this game seems to run very well, um, which is impressive, I believe, because N64 uh, emulation can be hit or miss on when we're talking game boards and not talking a full-on computer. So um, I think it plays really well, and that's just a great thing to see that they put some work into it and that this uh, game board with the processor and RAM and everything can... Um, support this these games and these systems. Alright, let's see. 
see, what have we got? Let's try some Mortal Kombat. So as you can see, this game runs excellent. Let's see. We'll try another minute or two of one of these, and then I'll switch to a new system. Wave race! Select your watercraft, please. Select your course. So this game seems to run at full speed. I may have heard some slight audio crackling, just a hair, but wasn't really noticeable. All right, let's move on to another system. Uh, let's check out some PSP games. Let's try Tekken 6. And it's neat to see PSP games on here. Um, only a couple of game boards that do that and I think they did a pretty good job with this system Lars, get ready for the next guy round one Round two. Fight. <laughs> 
as you can see, everything seems to be running pretty good. It runs at a good speed, sounds good, looks good. Overall, I'm quite impressed. Again, everything seems to run really well. It's running at a good speed. All right, let's move over to PlayStation 1. Let's do another racing game. Apparently this is not an English version of the game. Hopefully the other one is. As you can see, everything seems to be running good. Um, it's PlayStation 1, so I would expect everything to run well, but it's good to know that it does. And this review is getting pretty long, so I'm just going to play... Let's 
let's see. There we go. We got Super Nintendo. I'll quickly load up a game from each one of the other systems just to show you. But all these older systems should play perfectly fine. And they all have in my testing so far. Three Ninjas. I loved this movie when I was a kid. As you can see, Super Nintendo runs fine. Let's do original Nintendo. As you can see, it runs quite well. Let's do Game Boy Advance. Load up some Bomberman. As you can see, Game Boy Advance runs quite well. Let's do Game Boy Color. And you wouldn't think it, but the Game Boy Advance games um, actually play pretty well on an arcade cabinet, and they look really good on a big screen compared to the little tiny screen that comes with the handheld systems. As you can see, it runs pretty well. Looked a little choppy to me, but I don't have any reference on that one because I never played Game Boy Color. Go to Sega Genesis. I was more of a Sega guy when I was growing up.
So everything seems to run pretty good on the Sega Genesis as well. Uh, we have Final Burn Alpha, which is more arcade. Altered Beast, classic game. Love it. Rise from your grave. Rise from your grave. Arcade games are running well, running good as well. Let's go over to PC Engine. And then we'll find an Atari game and load that up as well. PC Engine runs well. Uh, let's go over to, whoops, over to 2D. Load up Frogger. I think that other one might have been an Atari 7800 game. This looks more like the Atari 2600. So, as you can see, the Atari games seem to run pretty well, too. I don't think graphics have aged that great on Atari, but it is classic. It's around where it all started, so a lot of people still like it. So that is your quick rundown of everything. Um, so when you're on the games list, to go to the search, press the start button. That brings you up to the search, and you can go through and press A on any one of these categories, or you can also search by name as well. And if you wanted to get over to these up here, you press start again, and then that brings you to these top categories here, and you press A to go into any one of those categories as well.
or you just press down rather to go into any one of those. And then one last thing to show you, let's go up here to the trackball category. It has 130 trackball games. It's nice that they are all set up in a separate category to make them nice and easy to find. And here I'll show you my favorite thing that none of the other game boards have done, at least not stock. I did mod one of the game boards to be able to play these games, but none of the other companies have included them stock. That is the Golden Tee Golf Series. So we have Golden Tee 2K, Golden Tee 3D, 97, 98, 99, Classic, and then the older ones, which are available on some of the other trackball game boards. So let it load up Golden Tee 3D. Here is my makeshift trackball. And if you guys hear the audio in that, it actually plays very nicely. Um, a couple of times I've gotten this game to play on some of the other systems, the audio is all choppy, but they actually included proper versions and the game board itself is power enough, powerful enough to run it. So for all you trackball owners out there, if you love golf games, these Golden Tee games are the best. They are so much fun to play. I love it. Um, so if nothing else, it's worth the upgrade to get Golden Tee Golf and a separate trackball category. And everything else is just a bonus, if you ask me. No, apparently I'm not very good right now. Oh crap, that was a little too hard. So as you can see, the Golden Tee Golf Series works very well on this game board. And has a good selection of uh, trackball games. World-class bowling, that's one of my favorite bowling games. Really good game. Here, we'll load up that real quick, and then we will end this short but not so short review. As you can see, this game runs pretty well. Um, I did include this one as an added game on the DX, um, but it didn't run quite as well as this. Uh, let's see, I think I have one more tiny thing to show you guys, and then we will end this. All right, the last thing to show you guys on your MAME arcade games, if you were to plug in a keyboard 
and hit the tab button, it brings up the MAME in-game menu. Um, for those of you who played with MAME on your computer or on other systems, you should be familiar with this menu. Um, in here, you can go. To, you can change the button mapping. You can go to input this game, and here we could remap the buttons. If this particular game was mapped incorrectly, or like on a fighting game, if you wanted to switch punch and kick or something like that, you could come in here to do it. And then the other thing is dip switches, which is nice. You could uh, come in here and change the dip switches. Sometimes you can change difficulty, um, and sometimes you can turn on and off different features that normally you don't have access to. So that's pretty cool as well. So that is pretty neat because on all of the other game boards out there that are available, or at least most of them, they don't give you access to that menu. And for those of you guys that like to tweak things to your liking or like the ability to be able to change more, um, this game board allows you to access the MAME in-game menu on the MAME arcade games. Pretty neat. Once again, just in a nice little feature. Um, for those of you that like to tweak things a little bit more, let me show you the uh, settings menu real quick, and then we will end this. Standard settings menu, like in all the other ones, you have your key settings for um, testing out the keys to make sure all your buttons and joysticks work. Um, this one has spot to test out player three and player four. And one neat thing about this game board, which I haven't seen on any other systems out there, normally for players three and four, you need to use USB encoders in order to hook up the players. This game board here is what it looks like with the cover off. So this is a family version. Uh, they only sell it in family, but there is a JAMA adapter. Um, so in the family version, this big 40 pin connector over here is your standard connector for players one and two. We plug in a wire harness, wired up to the buttons. And then you see this smaller connector right here. This is for players three and four. There's a separate wire harness that you can plug in there and wire players three and four directly to the game board. And I think that is just such an awesome feature. Um, it's so great. I'm not sure why other companies haven't thought of that. And the game board itself, if you take a look, everything looks very well, very professional, has a fan to keep everything cool, lots of extra connectors, not 100% sure what all of those do yet. And then there's your USB port, settings buttons, volume, um, audio jack, VGA, and HDMI, as well as your power plug. Um, And over here, it tells you how to navigate, start goes back. And here's where you would set, change it to coin setting, change your exit mode, auto exit three minutes, select mode, always allowed, or after inserting coin. Um, graphic mode, open or closed, that is their smoothing filter. Um, you can either have it on or off. Uh, language, then game settings. You can edit the difficulty, edit games list. For the uh, console games, you can change, if you have it set on coin, you can change how long, how many minutes you get per coin. Um, so just your basic settings menu, nothing really new here other than in the testing function, you can test players three and four, which is nice. So there is your quick rundown of, the, well, not so quick rundown, of the Alpha 3D Max. 10,000 games, uh, lots of great additional features, lots of great new systems. Overall, I am thoroughly impressed with this game board, and it's about time we actually got something really good and new on the market instead of repackaged, um, repackaged boards with more games. It's a brand new board brand new interface. This company's uh, 
pretty new and not as well known. And I dig these guys. They've been great to work with. They're super nice. And they actually listen to your customers. I had one little issue with something not working. I talked to them and they worked on a fix and sent it to me. So that's great. Most of these other companies, they don't care. Once they put something out, they don't care if it works or doesn't work. They know you're going to buy it anyways. And this company actually seems to take the time to listen to uh, its customers and listen to advice and uh, try to help fix any issues. All right, guys. So that is my short but not so short review of the brand new uh, Alpha 3D Max game board. I will be carrying this um, on my website soon. And before that, if you guys are interested in purchasing it, um, contact me and we can go over the pricing and shipping or pickup and all that stuff. All right, guys, as always, game on, my friends. Thanks for watching. Bye.